Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Waller. I'm the Cohen Professor of Holocaust and Genocide Studies here at Keene State College. We're home to the only undergraduate program in Holocaust and Genocide Studies in the U.S. And one of the things we emphasize with our students is that our program, for all of its uniqueness, is not simply about learning history lessons related to genocide and atrocity crimes, but it's about learning lessons from history. And one of those rich lessons from history is that if we stand by on the sidelines while these crimes are unfolding, the perpetrators will continue to perpetrate the atrocities. Unfortunately, today around the world, we have a host of countries engaging in abuses that could be described as war crimes, crimes against humanity, or the crime of genocide against vulnerable populations within their borders. One of the most notable of those is in China where China has engaged for the past several years in persecution and discrimination against the Uyghur Muslim population in the northwest region of Xinjiang. A couple of months ago, a colleague and I wrote a piece for the Georgetown Journal of International Affairs where we argued that what was occurring in Xinjiang were crimes against humanity, like the forced displa displacement of people, and also the crime of genocide. In that article, we raised the question about what type of responses we should have in the face of what's going on in China, particularly considering China's uh, significant influence on the global stage as a political and economic power. One of the things we argued was that there's a wide range of response tools, political, economic, legal and military that we could look at to try to change the behavior of China's offending regime and encourage greater protection and promotion of human rights. Among all those tools, one of the ones we've seen used just recently by the Biden administration is the dipl uh, diplomatic boycott of the 2022 Olympic Games scheduled to begin in Beijing in, on February 3rd. A diplomatic boycott is more than something symbolic. I mean, it's a step up from naming and shaming, where an administration or an organization looks at an abuse and calls it out to try to shame the perpetrator into changing an offending behavior. But when we have a diplomatic boycott, as the Biden administration has declared for the Olympic Games, it's saying while we're willing to send our athletes to participate, we're not willing to legitimize the games by sending government officials to attend the games and to be spectators at the games and representatives at the games. So this is a step up for us in terms of a diplomatic response. Our hope is that the vulnerable population of Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang can be protected by increasing the pressure that we have from these type of political tools in combination with things like economic sanctions, like legal references to the International Criminal Court, and even the possibility of military tacti tactics that would, would, would not result in military intervention, but might possibly force China's hand in terms of trying to protect a population that seems intent on destroying. So this is unfortunately yet another lesson for those of us who work in the field of Holocaust studies and our students who study this material to realize that the things we're studying are not historical case studies only, but they're contemporary issues with contemporary ramifications, and each of us have a role to play in helping shape how we respond to these situations of atrocity.